Um, now I'm very happy to introduce Susanna Krüger. She's the CEO of Save the Children. Just in case that you don't know what Save the Children does, it's a humanitarian aid organization. And what she especially stands for is really to try to cooperate with big corporation and corporations in order to transform the system and systematics of humanitarian aid. She has been working for eight years, uh, three years before, with social impact measurement for social enterprises and philanthropy, and now uh, she's the CEO of Save the Children for the last three years. So very happy to have you here, Susanna Krüger. Hi. Uh, I'm happy to be here uh, as well, as we met uh, through LinkedIn for this wonderful uh, opportunity, which is uh, quite rather, um, I mean, not the usual way to, to approach me, but thanks a lot. And I have been very inspired by the words um, Professor Ludica Freund, you said, um, about the mission of this school. And the mission was to, uh, to, um, to understand that, that there is a new dimension of business um, to uh, and you spoke about the, the potential transformation of business and what you're all probably going to do um, in your lives uh, later on or maybe now. And I'm coming from the perspective from a huge international NGO that works with these businesses that are really trying or want to try to make a difference. And I'm going to share a couple of observations and um, sometimes problems with you that I have experienced in the past years, and maybe we can speak about them uh, in a frank and open manner. And I have always been uh, inspired when I had the opportunity to witness the creation of a new idea um, or a new form of working together where people from different organizations and sometimes very different backgrounds um, attempted to solve a particular problem and hence had to come up with something new. And my special interest for such um, innovation processes at the moment lies in finding new solutions for kids who lack access to education, health, or nutrition, for example. And I, with Save the Children, and that's why I took that job, I want to contribute to new forms of working together across sectors to have a greater impact for these children we serve worldwide. And in particular, I've been inspired by leaders in NGOs and in corporates who were able to really co-create so what does that mean? Maybe you have heard that word and sometimes it appears as a buzz word and I don't use it at that. It means finding a shared goal that includes actually, but moves beyond your pure organizational self-interest in order to serve a common purpose. And I have witnessed such moments and I deeply believe in the positive power of such sometimes transforming partnerships for the greater good. However, since I've been following the debate around the changing landscape of philanthropy and social investment and with it co-creation, between businesses and NGOs for now almost 15 years, concepts have been to say the least, grandiose. Just a couple of quotes. Collective impact to transform the world. Shared value in true business creation. Strategic philanthropy, now catalytic philanthropy. Transformative partnerships to tackle poverty. Interesting words. And Please don't get me wrong, some companies are shifting from generosity in philanthropic giving to setting and achieving specific business aligned societal impact goals. Yes, and they are sometimes doing that with other partners. 
And yes, some NGOs walk that path and uh, overcoming old charity concepts of just giving. But here for you, let me point out three issues um, I've been grappling with in the past years, already before, but especially since I have entered uh, Save the Children. First issue, time. Corporates that enter a partnership want a clear business proposal of what is to be expected. They usually follow much as uh, any other donor. For example, when we work with the Foreign Office or with the BMZ, it's quite the same. They follow a project cycle consisting of one to three years. NGOs happen to be subject to the same project cycle, not because we so much want it, but because we are dependent on funds to sustain our work and our structure. And this creates a project logic which is not very suitable to long-term thinking. If you truly want to enter a partnership that will create something new, you need a lot of time. And time also to build trust. And time to test projects. Time to fail and time to try anew. And our Western idea of quick bulletproof return on investment is a major hurdle when it comes to innovation between NGOs and corporates in the social sector. Second issue, language. Honestly, we are quite a different breed. The time and effort, from my experience, and I have been working in both sectors as well as the, uh, the state as well, because that's another uh, language uh, uh, altogether. Um, if, we, if, we really, um, uh, if we really want to understand each other, um, we have to understand how to listen to each other. And that's not only words, that's really an important uh, scheme. And it's very hard to, uh, to get there. Because you have to comprehend and appreci appreciate the other's logic and that's quite enormous. So we also have sometimes a different understanding of what actually means social change. It's a big word, right? But what does it mean for a corporation? What does it mean for a state? What does it mean for an NGO? Third, and um, that I speak to my own sector, the moral nexus of NGOs. I joined Save the Children because I thought, and I think as international NGO in the 21st century, we need to develop from charity to social problem solving. And this is only possible when you enter new grounds. And I believe one of these new grounds is only possible with business in the picture. And I experience that it's sometimes very hard for NGO people to acknowledge that there are interests in the world and that they are not necessarily good or bad and that these interests can be worked with, and that pragmatism can be very helpful. And I do believe in the value of shared development, especially towards the SDGs, but I believe we need to get more realistic in our approach and more honest about the personal commitments and the resources we need to really work together and to work together well. What does it need then? First, it needs a commitment from all sides that we need time. Time to work on doable shared goals, to map the real interests that are involved, and to get an idea of who the major partners there are that are uh, to be involved. For that um, to happen, you need, second, a buy-in from the very top both from the NGO and the company, as well as from other relevant players. The good practice examples I have witnessed were actually always marked by a personal, sometimes deep encounter by individuals in the beginning of common and shared ideas and projects. Um, and only then an understanding of each other evolved and the interests of the other were recognized and, yes, could be valued. It's not uh, being done in a project proposal. It's personal ability to understand where the other is coming from. Third, 
how we actually want to measure our success needs a shared understanding of what the measurement system should be. And that measurement does not only mean control, but measurement means the possibility for true learning. And that is also very easily said and very hard done. Last point, four, what does it need? A clarity that we are, I call it always program rich, but system poor. What does that mean? We run a myriad of projects in the development world, pilots mostly, unfortunately, and forget that they need core funding to function, to thrive, and NGOs in the future, I think, must develop the capacity to sustainably manage large programs in cooperation with others. But that needs funding and commitment from donors, and that's far beyond simple project logic that still drives us. With these ideas, I'm looking forward to a lively discussion. Thank you.